Alright, happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful mothers out there. It's your man Akeem, and welcome to today's vlog. I'm here to give you my AFC East Division team grades for their picks of this year's NFL Draft. I'm going to start with the Buffalo Bills. They had a great defensive draft, picking up Marcel Darius in the first round, the defensive tackle out of, out of Alabama. He will definitely help this team stop the run. He was the number one projected D player in the NFL Draft by many analysts. This is a great behemoth athlete. And in the second round, they picked up Aaron Williams, the cornerback from, from Texas. He's a great cover corner with good ball skills. He had a lot of pass breakups last season and a couple of interceptions for the Longhorns. This is a great cover corner. And in the third round, they picked up Kelvin Shepard, the linebacker from LSU. He had over 100 tackles over the past two seasons. He could work well alongside Paul Plesnelski. And in the seventh round, they picked up another great corner, Justin Rogers out of Richmond. He was a great cover corner, and he was an All-American, one of the top-notch corners in the FCS divi FCS division. He's a great player. So I have to give this team a B+. They had a pretty good defensive draft. Some people think they could have went offensively, but I think they have enough weapons in the offensive side. They might have could use another receiver, but that's still a, uh, they still had a great draft. And, uh, of course, C.J. Spiller really needs to step up this season, but they still have Fab Five Freddie Jackson at the backfield as well. He can step up a couple times when Spiller is out. He's a good running back, and I think they're getting their offense together. Fitzpatrick is coming off a great season, and I just think they're going to get things rolling on the offensive side. But they could have went with another receiver, so I've got to give this team a B plus. I think they would have had a... An, uh, an A if they had a good receiver, but they still had a decent defensive draft. Now, Miami Dolphins is second. They had a decent draft. They picked up Marquise, Mark, <laughs> Mike Pouncey, the center slash guard from Florida. He's the brother of Marquise Pouncey. He's a great player, and I think he could work well alongside Jake Long. They could probably have the best young li offensive lineman in the NFL. They have a great set of linemen right now. And that, in the second round, they picked up running back Daniel Thomas, the running back out of Kansas State. He's a great Wildcat player who runs the Wildcat offense, and Miami definitely runs that play. It's one of their signature plays with Ricky Williams and Ronnie Brown, and I think he could be the future back for this team. Now, in the sixth run they picked up Charles Clay the fullback from Tulsa this is a great pick because he has outstanding hands he could they could also use him as a tight end or an H-back he's a very versatile player he could just play it all because of his size six foot two 230 pounds this kid is great and I do like his his foot his um, route running ability and the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield this was a great selection now I really think they should have went with the defensive lineman in the earlier rounds but they did not pick one up until the seventh round with defensive tackle Frank Kurse from Alabama A&M. I really think they should have selected Martin Parker, the defensive tackle from Richmond. He was the East-West Shrine game defensive player of the game, defensive MVP. This is a great player, and he was one of the key um, elements to the Spider t defense, and I think he could have been a good selection. A lot of people talk about his aggressiveness aggressiveness, and that he lacks of it, but I think he's still a good project. He is a slick player who, who, who was able to slip away from blockers and get to the backfield. This is a great selection and a good project that they should have selected. But I'm not going to hate on Frank Kurtz. He's a decent player. So overall, I'm going to give this team a C+. Plus. Now, the New York Jets, they had a good defensive draft as well, building up the defensive line. They had one of the top defenses in the NFL last season, and they, cut, they added a new addition to the linemen. They picked up Kendrick Ellis in the second round from Hampton. He had 95 tackles last season. He's a great defensive tackle who can get in the backfield and they pick up Muhammad Wilkinson the defensive tackle slash Ed from Temple he could play at the end at the 4-3 scheme and the tackle at the 3-4 scheme either way he's a very great versatile player he could play either either position and I really like this kid he had nine sacks last season and he showed up last year 250 pounds big guy and he can help out the defensive line for the New York Jets. Now, in the later rounds, they picked up a couple of skilled players in their offensive side, like Bilal Powell in the fourth round. He's a running back from Louisville. He sprouted up this year and came out of nowhere. During his first three seasons in his college football career, he underachieved. But this season, he had an outstanding year, rushing for over 1,200 yards, averaging six yards a carry. He's a good third down back. He could be used for a good third down back in the NFL. He doesn't have the top-notch speed like most of the backs have, but 
but he's still a good power runner, and I think he could get some good short yardages and work well with LaDainian Tomlinson and Sean Green. Now, in the fifth round, they picked up wide receiver Jeremy Curley, the receiver from, T from TCU. I think they're going to use him more as a return specialist because he's very elusive, I and mean, he has great balance, good body control movement, and he work works well in the open field. I think they're going to use him more as a special teamer because he had only five, over 500 yards over the past two seasons in his career. But in the seventh round, they picked up Scotty McKnight, the receiver from Colorado. I think they're going to use him as a possession receiver. Now, rumor has it is that they have three unrestricted free agents this year at the receiving core. Brad Smith, San Antonio Holmes, and Braylon Edwards. So they really needed to pick up some decent receivers. I think they picked up, they could have picked up better receivers, but these two Curly and McKnight, they're pretty decent receivers, so I'm not going to really hate on them. So overall, I'm going to give this team another C+. Now, last but not least, the New England Patriots. What a draft that they had. Even they're getting ready for next year's draft. They picked up two offensive linemen who helped build up this offensive line in the future. Marcus Cannon in the fifth round from TCU and their first round pick Nate Solder from Colorado. Both of these players are behemoth athletes with Solder weighing in 319 pounds at 6'8 and Cannon at 6'5 358 pounds. Wow! Big players who could definitely protect Tom Brady in the future and their future quarterback as well. In the second round they helped out the defensive backs and picked up cornerback Roz I. Donnelly from um, Virginia. He's a great cover corner, and I like his his, his fluid hips. He, he has good. He's great speed, breaking and closing to the football. He has outstanding ball skills, and I do like this selection. He could be able to get to the ball and stick with any receiver in the league. He was hurt for most of the season last season, but he's still he has recovered, and I think he can get back to his top notch form. Now in the second round, they picked up another running. Two running backs in the second and third round. Shane Vereen in the second round from California. And Steven Ridley, the running back from LSU. I think these are really great picks. Shane Vereen is a very elusive player who can catch the ball outside of the backfield. He can start right away for this team. And I think they're going to use Steven Ridley more as a goal line back and a short yardage back. He averaged 4.6 yards a carry last season. And he weighs over 220 pounds. He's a big guy. And I do like this selection. At first, I was a little bit confused. But I think they're they're going to use them in short yardage and goal line situations. That was a great idea. And probably one of the best picks of this year's draft is picking up Ryan Mallett, the quarterback from Arkansas in the third round. This is a great selection for them because, because they're definitely thinking about their future and having a great replacement for Tom Brady. He has all the detangibles for a passing quarterback. He has a strong arm, great vision, and he understands where his, his receivers need to be. This guy is very accurate and I do like this, this selection because they really need a, a protege for Brady in the future. And I think Ryan Mallet has the ability. Yes, he needs to work on his footwork. But look at Tom Brady. He has terrible footwork when he first came into the NFL. And look how he came down. Come on. Don't 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 doubt Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick is a beast, and he understands how to play how to play the quarterback position. I do like this selection. The GM, the owner of the Patriots, Bill Belichick. There are a bunch of geniuses. I have to give this team an A put an A plus for their draft. Not only before their picks, but their trades for next year's draft. They have two first rounds and two second rounds. This is amazing. This is just crazy. So they're going to start off this next year's draft just like how they did this year. They're just controlling everybody, just being the puppet masters of the NFL draft. This, this was a great draft for them, and I'm very proud of this team. They had a great job. I think they're going to get get back towards the playoffs so the AFC Championship, maybe even a Super Bowl next season. They have a great team and they, great minds in this organization. They had a good draft. For tomorrow's video, I'm going to go back to the NFC side of the, of the conferences and talk about the NFC North grades and tell you who I have as their grades for each of their teams. Thank you for watching today's vlog. I'm your man, Akeem McCall. Be easy.